supporting Oregon athletics. Taylor Electric Supply Incorporated, Harold Taylor. Montador Vineyards, Oregon's premier wine estate. Mashofsky Enterprises, Art and Ed Mashofsky. Immer and Oswald Volvo and Cardale Mountain Realty, your Central Oregon real estate specialist. Stanford won the toss of the coin and elected to receive to start the football game, and so the Ducks will be kicking off as you see the Stanford band. And we'll take a look at the starting lineups uh, for the Ducks in this contest. First of all, let's start with the defense. The guys up front, and they've really done a good job all year long. Marcus Woods would get the only sack of the day, the official sack of the day for that trio. The linebacking core started virtually every game. Peter Brantley will be our halftime feature. And in the secondary, Daryl Singleton, Rory Derry, Eric Castle, who is leading the Ducks in, in tackles, and also Daryl Smith. Offensively for the Ducks, Reitzik uh, bothered by a bit of a bad knee coming into the ball game, and early in the contest got a big shiner on that left eye and a big hit. And the skill position players, we've already mentioned Jones, Thomas, and Kelamini, and so forth. So the Ducks kicking off. Uh, I know kickoffs concerned you as well because Milburn uh, does a nice job there too. We did, and we didn't kick the ball off as well as I'd hoped. Our coverage was pretty good. Uh, Nice job there, I think, by John Fitzgerald, who uh, got in there to get Milburn down on the opening kickoff. So first down and 10. This is their big fullback slash halfback, depending on where they want to put him, Tommy Vardell. And he really was, was not a factor in this game. Uh, no, he's got 12 touchdowns on the year. Nice job there on Marcus, uh, by Marcus Woods getting uh, Milburn for uh, no gain. Uh, two rushes right at the middle of our line. Uh, Basically, they came up empty. You can see Marcus come off of his uh, man, the nose guard, to, to hit Milburn in the backfield, and we get a lot of help there. Uh, I thought uh, we controlled the inside running game extremely well. Third down and 10 for Stanford. And Columbus will go to the air for the first time in this game. A little dump to Milburn, hoping that maybe he can break a tackle and run, but you can see right there, Eric Castle, again, brilliant in this contest with the stuff. He drew a crowd. You notice there were three green shirts around him. We kind of <laughs> had a hunch that he might get the ball in those little dump passes. We just didn't want to give him any running room. Musgrave does a good job avoiding the pressure here, pulls it down and slides safely uh, for a couple of yards. Not quite like Ricky Henderson going into second, but effective enough. Second down and 10. Play action fake, good protection, and hits Reitzig coming across the middle who just picks it right off the carpet. And you'll be able to see that on the uh, down camera. Good job on the protection. And Musgrave steps up and throws a little low to Reitzig, but you can see him cradle the ball cleanly, uh, did not trap it, and made a nice catch for the first down. One of five receptions on the day for Reitzig. So the next play we see is a second down and eight from the Stanford 42. Little trap draw, and Juan Shedrick uh, Got a block downfield, but didn't stay on the block. Uh, left his feet, uh, but we still pick up a first down. So it'll be first and 10 at the Stanford 33. And right here, you'll notice the top of the screen, Calamini out of the backfield, and uh, nobody is near him as Musgrave hits him. Calamini cradles at home, and the Ducks have the first points of the ball game. The Stanford uh, outside linebacker right there is supposed to cover him, number 42. He bites on the run fake, doesn't even see Calamini hardly run by him. They're in man coverage, and... Uh, we felt if we could catch him in man coverage, we could get this pass, and certainly it did work out that way. Indeed it did, so on their first offensive possession, the Ducks get on the scoreboard, and now this thing settles into a defensive struggle for about the next 15 minutes. Volpe, who you remember uh, three years ago or two years ago, was an over 1,000-yard rusher and all Pac-10, uh, has been relegated to second team duty. He's a heck of a football player. Third and five. Columbus back to throw. Oh, Peter, Peter, <laughs> Peter. He had a touchdown. Uh, he was over there covering Milburn and uh, just let it go right through his hands. He had actually knocked Milburn down to the ground, and, uh, and when Milburn got up, Brantley was in great position. Yep. So yep. Stanford gets it back after the Ducks are unable to move it. Again, Andy Connor, you can see, uh, came off of his left outside linebacker position, moved to the middle, and covered Milburn very tightly. Uh, get Milburn on the sweep there and knock him out of bounds short of first down yardage. Good play by Brantley again. So the Ducks do get it back midway through the first quarter. Great pass and catch there. Uh, Musgrave to Reitzig. Uh, kind of the catch that Joe Reitzig's been well known for. Over the shoulder. Difficult catch. Looking back into the sun. 
and makes a great grab. Boy, indeed he did. That's a gain of 23 and a first down once again into Stanford territory. First down play here. Musgrave pressured, comes off of it, hits Burwell coming across. Uh, Bill did a real good job avoiding uh, two or three sacks in this game and getting the pass off. Good protection here, throws a little behind Joe Reitzig. Little dinged up there. I think that's maybe when he suffered that shiner. Uh, Joe's been playing hurt. He's uh, really a tough guy. Here we get a bad uh, job of blocking on our outside, on the right side, and they come in and uh, block the field goal attempt. So a scoring opportunity is missed, and Stanford will take over, but the defense once again does a great job. First and 10 for Stanford. Columbus will swing past to Vardell. Brantley reads it, and then a host of ducks converge. Good job. Brantley missed the tackle, but slowed him up long enough to allow Batista and others uh, to get there to tackle Vardell for a very minimal gain. You can see he ducks right under. Nice job by Vardell slipping that tackle. Uh, Cummings comes from the backside. Nice job by Batista getting there for the tackle. So second down and 12 for Stanford. About five minutes to go in the first quarter. Again, you just see everywhere Milburn went, he had company. Joe Farwell played a great football game again. He stuffed Vardell in the hole, came off and made the play on Milburn out there on that one. The Ducks uh, unable to move the football, so Stanford gets it back. And here they have good field position for one of the first times in the football game, and your defense just actually makes them go backwards. They do. Nice job there again. To, uh, Andy Connor getting Milburn for a loss on a little quick screen out in the flat here. Again, we wanted to play him very, very tight, not let him have a lot of running room after he catches the football. And you can see Andy Connor's there uh, to just trip him up for about a three-yard loss. At no time during the game did Stanford penetrate your 34-yard line. That's, that's remarkable. That's amazing. Good pressure here. He just throws the ball away. Had him uh, probably sacked for loss, and he wisely threw the ball out of bounds and away. So the Ducks get it back with a little over a minute to play in the first quarter, leading at 7 0. A little slant. See, Scott runs out of his shoes, and Reitzig has 17 yards. Good job. Musgrave looks off and then comes back and hits Reitzig on the slant pattern, who's wide open. And Joel picks up another nice game. So the ball is now out to the 30 yard line, trying to get out of that deep field position. Burwell to the outside, and he'll get five here. Good job bouncing the play outside. It basically uh, was designed to go inside, but he saw a little daylight outside and bounced it out there. In two tight ends here, Musgrave pressured, but still gets the ball off to Thomason, and he's interfered with. And uh, since the penalty is only about three yards downfield, it's an automatic first down at the spot. If it's anywhere within sight of 15 yards, uh, you don't get a 15-yard penalty. It's a spot foul. Great uh, play again by Burwell. Same, similar play to the one he breaks for the touchdown in the second quarter. So at the end of one period of play, it's the Ducks with a 7-0 lead over Stanford. As we get ready for the second quarter, the Ducks have the football. And Coach, uh, this is kind of the period uh, of the time in this game where you had some opportunities as we go to the highlights uh, with pretty good field position on two, uh, two or three occasions and unable to get some points. Uh, did you get a little frustrated at this stage? Started maybe? to get a little nervous, Todd, because we needed to convert uh, field position to points and we were not doing it early enough. All right, let's pick up the highlights for the second quarter. And as we mentioned, Oregon has the football at the Stanford 46, second down and eight. Bill under pressure finds Thomason for the first down. Uh, Jeff's only catch of the day. Uh, they did a real good job of holding him up at the line of scrimmage, not letting him off into some pass routes. And we have a miscommunication here. Bill uh, read the coverage one way, Joe read it the other, and the result was interception. And you're apparently having a conversation about that Trying to get it straightened point. out. Real good job by the defense here. Great pressure by Brantley. They tried a little flea flicker on us. The secondary was deep. They didn't bite on the run fake. And James Batista gets an interception. Finally gets one. Well, it hit him right in the chest. I mean, James <laughs> well, <that> really, <laughs> he did a good job here. But notice the pressure by Brantley. He had to get rid of the ball. And Batista did a good job after he took a couple steps up on the run, dropped back, saw the uh, receiver coming in from the outside, and stepped in front of him. Really a nice job by him. It was nice. 
So the Ducks get it back, and again, great field position down the sideline looking for Calameni. Nobody can handle it. Same play we uh, scored on in the first quarter, but they, this time they were in zone defense, and the safety came over and made the play. Build a throw. Quick pass to Jones out there in the flat. Threw a little bit behind him, didn't have an opportunity to turn it up. Now, on fourth and two, it would have been a real long field goal. You go for it. Decide to try to pick up the first down, and uh, we come very close here. We don't do as good a job blocking this as we should have. Uh, and Calamini's just about two or three inches short of the first down. That's exactly what it was, inches short. So Stanford holds, and I imagine the frustration level uh, is getting even higher now. It is, and Columbus scrambles out of the pocket here. Labounty in pursuit, misses the tackle, and Columbus scrambles up and gets out of bounds. Gets a first down, the ball at the Stanford 45. This is one of the few times in the day that uh, Milburn was actually able to get loose, and Castle comes over to make a nice tackle to prevent a bigger game, but it is good for 11 and a first down. And he's mad because he was just a little slow adjusting to him coming out of the backfield in motion. He knew it uh, and, and allowed another first down. Volpe up the middle. Uh, good job in there by LeBounty, Farwell, and Marcus Woods. This is a third down and six play. Big play as it turns out, too. It, the completion would have been short of the first down, but I think it was McCaffrey called for pushing off, trying to get open, or what one of the receivers. It was McCaffrey, their tight end tight came end. off and uh, got in, uh, kind of blocked Roy Derry, and so they lose uh, the down as well as the yardage. Here we throw a little screen pass. Oh, pick up your feet, Sean. Uh, stumbled <laughs> uh, and went down. A little quick screen to Burwell, who came out of the backfield in motion and then came back inside. You can see Colin Hall downfield getting the block, and. Kanapu and he just kind of lost his footing a little bit. Really a pretty good job getting his hand down, spinning forward for the first down. So, after an incomplete pass, this is second down and 10 from the 25. Burwell, got the feet up there, and he's gone. 75 yards for the touchdown. A big, big play as the Ducks now take a 14 to nothing lead, and that is, whew, as Sean says, our play of the day. <laughs> Tell us how it worked. Well, it's the uh, same play we ran several times earlier, and uh, we put this in. If you remember, after the BYU mm -hmm. uh, had run it so well, uh, we decided to put it in ourselves. Uh, we're in a kind of an offset eye here to the weak side. We bring Anthony Jones across in motion and, and uh, actually bust the sign. He's supposed to come on out uh, and release here. He kind of blocks this man is who we're also trapping on the play. Uh, Tattersall and Kanapa do a great job on this play. Uh, they both show a little pass. Kanapu comes down to block this man right here, and this linebacker starts to blitz. Tattersall recognizes the blitz, comes off, and just gets a piece of him to allow Burwell, and that's the man that tripped up Burwell in the backfield. Uh, and then Kanapu, after he slams this guy down, comes on up and hits the safety and screens the safety off, and that's how the, uh, the run developed to go down the field so far. Juan Shedrick comes out of the backfield, widens the backer because he thinks it's pass. And once we got these three people, these four people in here blocked, the key block was Kanapu coming off and picking a piece of the safety. And Burwell goes 75 yards, uh, which is the longest run, I believe, since Tony Cherry went 80-something yards against Stanford quite a few years ago. It's also the longest run in the Pac-10 this year. You can see Kanapu come off. Tattersall picked up the blitzer. Now Kanapu right down there, 79, blocks the free safety, and bingo, there goes Sean. Uh, I've been waiting for this all year, Todd, because <laughs> I've been talking about how explosive he is, and I think his longest run was about 18 or 19 yards prior to this. He has tremendous speed and quickness. Indeed he does, and he also has nine touchdowns on the year as well. And he's tired. <laughs> he is tired. <laughs> he said that he was tired, and he was hoping nobody would catch him from behind. But it's a big play in a game that really had turned into a defensive struggle at that point, and now the Oregon defense continues its effort. Marcus Woods uh, being single blocked on this play, comes off uh, the offensive guard, sheds him, and makes the tackle for his uh, sixth sack of the year, which uh, ties uh, Poutier's best year uh, in sacks at six as a nose guard. So he's tied as the number one guy at nose guard in sacks in, in a single season. And Labonte's just one away oh, from the three. Oh, Batista had another one. Well, you were talking about the ball in his hands, and this uh, one just kind of bounced away. Well, he did bat it a little bit. 
But Columbus on third down and 12, and this was the biggest play of the day for Milburn. It was, and uh, we were up faking a blitz, and uh, Castle's kind of supposed to bracket him inside, and he got caught up a little too tight and couldn't get back to help Singleton on the inside. Good pressure here by Cummings and Bannison, and he just throws it away. Columbus does out of bounds. Nice catch by uh, yeah, a little old, the, the Boomer. Yeah. The Boomer, he's getting married in April. So Columbus trying to go deep to McCaffrey, and I'm not sure if Daryl Smith pulled his arm back or he what. He did. I, I saw that on the coaching film this morning from the end zone, and he got his hand in there, and as, the, as, as McCaffrey was bringing the ball down, uh, Daryl stripped it out. Nice play by Daryl Smith. 51-yard field goal attempted and missed to the right. And that was really their best opportunity because they had the ball at the 34, and that's as close as they ever got. Great pressure by Farwell. You can see we've got McCaffrey surrounded on this one. Three guys there to make the tackle. Now we're going to show you three straight little hitches or out patterns by Stanford to establish a little pattern here. Columbus to McCafferty. Uh, they're picking on Hosey over here. We're playing soft in, in the zone and uh, don't want to give up the big one. They're moving the ball down the field. Another one now uh, to Pickney over there, number six. Uh, another first down. And then? And then one too many times. Mingo just laying back and breaks him on the ball in front, and away he goes. He's got some speed. 76 yards, which uh, puts him up in the top 10 career interception returns in Oregon football history. He's tired, too. But now it's 21-0. This is a big play. It breaks it open. It is. Uh, just, a, just a great job by Hosey reading the route, breaking on the ball, and accelerating into the football. And he is a... Uh, a track uh, man as well. He's a triple jumper and uh, he's a quarter mile type person. Uh, real good quickness and speed and he showed it right there just running away from Columbus. 76 yards for the touchdown with a point after it is 21 nothing with 21 seconds to play. One final opportunity for Stanford near the end of the first uh, half and this is kind of how the first half went defensively for Oregon. Right on Milburn, Daryl Smith made the stop. Going to the third quarter, uh, you were leading 21-0 at the halftime, but uh, one would sense that you might have had some instructions about watching for a Stanford comeback based on what's happened in years past. And I think it was good in this first drive of the third quarter that you got another score. It was, and we, uh, we talked about that. Great uh, timing pass there to Joe Reitzig for the first down. We talked about offensively since we were going to receive the kickoff that we needed to go down and produce some points right away and not let Stanford back in this contest in the third quarter. Good job by Calamini coming around the corner, picking up another first down. Gain of 11. So the ball now at the Oregon 45, first and 10. Good job on the counter play. Burwell picks up a nice big gain there. And now we're starting to move the football the way I like to move it. That's Mixing nice the run and the pass. The running back doesn't get hit until he's 15 yards downfield. Protecting the football, you notice. Both hands in, the, in traffic. He has been doing that a little bit better. But the drive does stall, and uh, this is a record-breaking field goal by Greg McCallum. 47 yards, the 33rd successful field goal of his career, breaking the mark that he had previously had, along with Matt McLeod and Kirk Dennis. And he has uh, quite a few more games to go in his career. He stops Stanford, and another big play on special teams, Brian Brown. Great job uh, by Brian. Uh, tremendous blocking up front uh, by our return team. 60-yard uh, punt return by Brian Brown deep into Stanford territory. You can see he catches it, shakes one guy, 24. Terrell uh, Edwards, uh, I believe that's where the penalty, that they were holding Terrell Edwards uh, by the face mask. Now, I don't know why they didn't call a uh, personal foul on it, but they had him by the face mask. And you can see a, a real nice cut there uh, by Brian. And just couldn't quite avoid Vardell coming back down the field and tackling him. Brian Brown is going to move up in the national uh, rankings here and certainly in the Pac-10 with uh, his 60 yard of this week and the long one last week. Well, he is. Uh, more importantly, I think Milburn is going to move down because of the great job our coverage did. Uh, I think that's a touchdown. You know, <laughs> it's hard I to mean, not call it a oh, touchdown. Oh, I'll tell you what. That ball, now you'll see it from the end zone film here. Uh, great job on the quick screen out there to Kelamini. Kelamini. Cuts inside, right here, back down, and he's got the ball in his left hand. You can see it breaks the plane 
right there. It goes right over the pylon, which is the goal line. That should be a touchdown. But they don't give it to him, so Burwell gets it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he gets it, but there's uh, quite a long discussion as to whether or not. And there shouldn't be on this because the ball is clearly in his, in his uh, right hand and it's on the goal line or across the goal line. But his back was to the, the man who usually signals it and the umpire. He came, had to come in and check with the umpire to see if the ball had crossed the plane. Good pressure here on the pass rush. Matt Labounty in there, uh, but Lynch is now in at quarterback. A very good scrambler, good runner. Hand off to Milburn, tries to get around the outside. Oh, can you believe that? Roy Derry puts a great hit on Milburn. The ball pops right up in the air, goes right to their tight end, and they pick up four more yards. <laughs> That's a little different twist to the option attack, I guess. Nice play again by Batista, deflecting the ball away. I think this may be one of the biggest areas of improvement in our defense is the play of Batista and Farwell, our inside linebackers in pass defense. Nice job there by Castle breaking up the pass to McCaffrey on the crossing route. I think Eric had, I think he had 16 tackles in the game. And about four pass breakups, I think. Screen pass to Burwell. And a nice pickup getting the ball out of the deep end of our territory out to around midfield. You can see Burwell's going to step up in here. He'll slip out right to your left of your scheme, 21. Uh, get the line out in front of him. Greg Phillips out there who aggravated an ankle sprain in the game. Uh, I think we've come out of it relatively healthy, but nice job by Sean protecting the football again and picking up another first down. Gain of 22. First and 10 now at the Oregon 44. Howard Blackwell in uh, for his uh, first action since the Utah State game when he hurt his uh, knee, picked up a few yards. But the uh, drive stalls here as uh, Musgrave is uh, knocked down, I guess. Tried to hurdle his way out of there, but he couldn't do it. Looks like he's getting better, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Health-wise. Yeah, exactly. And here's what you've been talking about on special teams. Milburn, I mean, this is a great punt. It's 47 yards. It's over four seconds hang time. And Melbourne has absolutely nowhere to go but backwards. Nowhere to go, and he went backwards. And, uh, you know, he almost shook it loose. Calamini clear down there. And Matt Labounty, I think that's his first tackle on, on punt coverage really? of the year. But just a tremendous job. Uh, this is a probably at least a 4-5 hang. Uh, uh, we worked on it in practice, and Tommy did a great job. He had his uh, highest hang time of fall this uh, this week he had a lot of them over 4748 he had one about 492 and i think fairly consistently in this game he was over 45 but you can see how dangerous milburn is he, we got people in position and he breaks tackles out there and matt labounty's over there brian brown who had to replace johnny taylor on our punt coverage team also did a good job so stanford with a football but deep in their own territory and unfortunately uh, the biggest pass play of the day for Stanford. McCaffrey, the older, the shoulder catch, good for 52 yards. I was uh, right there to watch that one, and a uh, great pass by Lynch. Dropped it right in over his shoulder, and a perfect pass and a nice catch. Ellery Roberts, that's a transfer from Miami who hadn't played much since early in the year, and Daryl Smith uh, welcomed, welcomed him to Autzen Stadium. Again, the ball is at the 34, but again, that's where it's going to stay. Brian Castle. Or Eric. Eric Castle. Brian's his brother. And I've done it again. He's he, going to kill me. He ought to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> he graduated a couple of years ago. He was a little bigger. Yeah. Nice job here. Cummings misses the sack. I mean, you know, that's what happens when you miss the tackle. And Romeo Bandis in the redshirt freshman gets credit for the sack. Here comes Cummings from the right of your screen. Lynch is starting to scramble. Cummings, wrap up, wrap up. He loses the sack. And there's Bandison. To get it. Gets help from Peter Brantley, but Bandison gets credit for the sack. End of the third quarter. The Ducks have dominated this one. Here we go into the fourth quarter. The Ducks leading Stanford 31 to nothing, and uh, that will be it as far as the scoring is concerned. But again, we've got a bunch of defensive plays we want to show you uh, in this fourth quarter of play. Also, some new people getting into the contest as well. We started off with Musgrave to Reitzik again. Good for 21 yards and a first down. Going over the opposite shoulder, away from the defender. Uh, Reitzig, as always, does a tremendous job adjusting to the football, turns back over his outside shoulder and makes the catch away from Scott, who's an excellent defender. First and 10 at the 43. 
Juan Shedrick now in at fullback. He gets the call and a good strong effort here. Picked up eight yards, uh, running over a few people in the process. Like to get him completely healthy. Unable to uh, sustain the drive, so Stanford gets it back, but uh, this drive doesn't go very far. There's Cummings who missed the sack. He now gets, I'll well, see, he got, he got back to the line got of scrimmage. Got back to the line of scrimmage. So he doesn't doesn't get a count sack. as a sack, but a nice play. We get good pressure up inside. Uh, O'Connor, uh, Andy Connor spins off, and Cummings comes in from the backside. John Aachen now in at quarterback as uh, Bill Musgrave takes a seat on the sidelines. Nine minutes to play. A little screen pass to Howard Blackwell, and Howard picks up 23 yards and a first down. We'll take another look at that one. Good job by John Fakes in there to Howard. Howard slips out the right side of the offense, the left side of the screen. And you can see Sunia, 59, peeling back. Bud Bowie out leading the way here. And Howard uh, gets knocked out of bounds. Gain of 23. But unfortunately, the drive again stalls. And uh, Thompson comes in again. And again, great special teams coverage as well here. Very high punt. Milburn trying to go one way, trying to go the other. And Le and uh, Steve O'Connor gets the tackle on that one. A couple of series later, Stanford trying to go deep. And it's Daryl Singleton. So I think everybody in your secondary has an interception. It's his now. first interception of his career. Watch this. I mean, he's lucky he doesn't blow a knee out right here. <laughs> he's trying to get cute and make a move. He made about three moves in the air. That's the problem. He didn't, he didn't fool anybody because they were all in the air. <laughs> you watch this on the replay. Lynch trying to go deep. And Singleton's in great shape. Comes up, makes the interception. His momentum carries him down the field about seven yards. Then he almost stumbles and falls. Now he's going to come back and look at all these moves. Boy, I tell you, as they say, he's got more moves than a guy, uh, a bachelor in a singles bar. There you there got it. it. Is. That's, that's the one you wanted me to use the last time, right? Well, no? I or guess something so. something like that. No, it's a good one. <laughs> one more final defensive play here. Steve O'Connor, a senior from Sheridan, Oregon, who's done a great job for us in the punt coverage team all year long uh, gets the sack here excellent pass rush arm under move getting held but uh, does a nice job sacking Lynch was Steve ever a wrestler yes he, I think he did was some wrestling he? in high yeah. school yeah, a little take down there as well so he gets a nice sack and that's it end of the ball game 31 nothing and we hope to see you next week Oregon football 90 sponsored in part by the Oregon Club of Portland Dedicated to supporting Oregon athletics. Taylor Electric Supply Incorporated. Harold Taylor. Montador Vineyards. Oregon's premier wine estate. Mashovsky Enterprises. Art and Ed Mashovsky. Immer and Oswald Volvo. And Cardale Mountain Realty. Your Central Oregon real estate specialist.